Hello, everyone. <clears throat> Welcome to lecture six, part two. And in this week's lecture, we shall be looking at data business intelligence. Learning outcomes for the lecture are describe the roles and purposes of data warehouses and data marts in an organization identify the advantages of using business intelligence to support managerial decision making identify the four common characteristics of big data examine data mining and identify the three elements of data mining explain the importance of data analytics and data visualization supporting decisions with business intelligence Data warehouses extend the information of data into information. In the 1990s, executives became less concerned with the day-by-day -day business operations and more concerned with overall business functions. The data warehouse provided the ability to support decision-making without disrupting the day-to-day -day operations. Now, what is data warehouse and what is the purpose of data warehouse? So we look at what data warehouses are and the purpose of it in the next few slides. Data warehouse is a logical collection of information gathered from many different operational databases that supports business analysis activities and decision-making tasks. The primary purpose of data warehouse is to aggregate information throughout an organization into a single repository for decision-making purposes. Now let's also go and discuss the primary difference between data and data warehouse. The primary difference between data and data warehouse is that a database stores information for a single application. Whereas a data warehouse stores information from multiple databases or multiple applications and external information such as industry information. A data warehouse enables cross-function analysis. It allows industry analysis, market analysis, et cetera, all from a single repository. The reasons Businesses, the reasons why business analysis is carried out is one, due to inconsistent data definitions. Example, every department had its own method for recording data. So when trying to share information, data did not match and users did not get the data they really needed. The second reason is lack of st data standards. This includes, or an example of lack of data standards would be, managers need to perform cross-function analysis using data from all departments, which differed in granularities, formats, and levels. Third reason, poor data quality. Example, the data, if available, were often incorrect or incomplete. Therefore, users could not rely on the data to make decisions. The next reason is inadequate data usefulness. Example, users could not get the data they needed. What was collected was not always useful for intended purposes. Next reason, ineffective direct data access. Most data stored in operational databases did not allow users direct access. Users had to wait to have their queries or questions answered by management information system professionals who could code SQL. Data Marts. Data aggregation, it allows a collection of data from various sources for the purpose of data processing. ETL, or in long term, extraction, transformation, and loading. It is a process that extracts information from internal and external databases, transforms the information using a common set of enterprise definitions, and loads the information into a data warehouse. 
A data mart generally contains a subset of data warehouse information. The extraction, transformation, and loading ETL process gathers data from internal and external databases and passes it on to the data warehouse. The ETL process also gathers data from data warehouse and passes it to data marts. The model demonstrates how the information is compiled from internal databases or transactional databases and external databases through ETL. Then it sends subsets of information to the data marts through the ETL process. And the model is shown in the in the, in the model is shown in the slide at the moment. Now, if you look closely, the data warehouse modeled in the above figure or the figure shown in the slide compiles information from internal databases or transactional or operational databases and external databases through ETL. It then sends the subset of information to the data marts through the ETL process. Now let's go and differentiate between data warehouse and data mart. A data warehouse has an enterprise organizational focus while a data mart focuses on a subset of information for a given business unit such as finance. Information cleansing or scrubbing. An organization must maintain high quality data in the data warehouse. Dirty data. When we talk about dirty data, these are data with errors or are flawed data. Information cleaning, pardon me, information cleansing or scrubbing. It is a process that weeds out and fixes or discards inconsistent, incorrect and incomplete information. Dirty data problems. How can data or how can dirty data impact business reports and analysis? The concepts generally come from the com computing term garbage in, garbage out. If the data used to generate the report is dirty, then the report will be inaccurate. Some common types of dirty data include inaccurate data, duplicate data, misleading data, incorrect data, non-formatted data, violation of business rules, data integrity problems. Information cleansing example. Information cleansing allows an organization to fix these types of inconsistencies and clean the data in the data warehouse. The types of inconsistencies include missing records or attributes, redundant records, missing keys or other required data, erroneous relationships or references, inaccurate data. Information cleansing or scrubbing continued, cost of accurate and complete information. Why do you think most businesses cannot achieve 100% accurate and complete information? If they had to choose a percent for acceptable information, what would it be and why? Some companies are willing to go as low as 20% complete just to find business intelligence. Few organizations will go below 50% complete or accurate. The information is useless if it is not accurate. Achieving Perfect information is almost impossible. The more complete and accurate an organization wants to get its information, the more it generally costs. The trade-off between perfect information lies in accuracy versus completeness. Accurate information means it is correct, while complete information means there are no blanks. Most organizations determine a percent high enough to make good decisions at a reasonable cost, such as 85% accurate and 65% complete. Business intelligence. 
Organizational data is difficult to access. Organizational data contains structured data in databases. Organizational data contains unstructured data such as voicemail, phone calls, text messages, and video clips. Let's do check on some facts. Due in part to the Internet of Things, the digital universe is doubling its size every two years and will multiply tenfold between 2013 to 2020. In other words, from 4.4 trillion gigabytes to 44 trillion gigabytes of data. For perspective, the amount of information in the digital universe will fill a stack of iPad air tablets reaching two thirds of the way to the moon. That means close to about 253,074 kilometers from Earth to its way to the moon. By 2020, there will be 6.6 .6 stacks. Today, the average household creates data enough to fill 65 iPhones per year. Let's say 32 GB iPhones. In 2020, this will rise to about 318 iPhones by an average household. Now, today, if a byte of data were a gallon of water, in only 10 seconds, there would be enough data to fill an average house. By the year 2023, it might take one or two seconds. Business intelligence continued. Now data points, an individual item on a graph or a chart. Data points are two pieces of raw data that have an intersection or correlation. Data points are in a data lake. Now, if you look at data lake, a data lake is a storage repository that holds a vast amount of raw data in its original format until the business needs. A data broker is someone who collects data from the data lake. So a data broker is basically a business that collects personal information about customers or consumers and sells that information to other organizations. The problem, data rich, information poor. Many organizations find themselves in a position of being data rich and information poor. Even in today's electronic world, managers struggle with the challenge of turning their business data into intelligence. As business increase their reliance on enterprises such as CRM, they are rapidly accumulating vast amounts of data. Every interaction between departments or with the outside world, historical information on past transaction, as well as external market information is entered into information systems for better use and access. So what is the solution then when we say business is data rich, data rich and information poor? First of all, the solution is improving the quality of business decisions has a direct, of impact, direct impact on costs and revenue. Now, business intelligence enables business users to receive data for analysis that is reliable, consistent, understandable, and easily manipulated. For instance, giving a discount may or may not help the bottom line depending on the pro profitability of the client over the duration of the relationship. To improve the quality of business decisions, managers can provide existing staff with business intelligence systems and tools that can assist them in making better, more informed decisions. The result creates an agile, intelligent enterprise. A few examples of using BI or business intelligence to make informed business decisions include uh, in retail and sales, predicting sales, in banking, forecasting the levels of bad loan, operations management, predicting machinery failures, brokerage and security trading, predicting when bond price will change, insurance, forecasting claim amounts and 
medical coverage costs and so forth. The solution, business intelligence. Business intelligence can answer tough questions. The process is initiated by analyzing a global report, say, of sales per quarter. Every answer is followed by a question and users can drill deep down into a report to get, a fundament, to get fundamental causes. Once they have a clear understanding of root causes, they can take highly effective action. Finding the answers to tough business questions by using data that is reliable, consistent, understandable, and easily manipulated allows a business to gain valuable insight. Now, business intelligence also allows competitive monitoring. A company keeps tab of its competitors' activities on the web using software that automatically tracks all competitor website activities such as discounts and new products. Data map, a technique for establishing a match or balance between the source data and the target data warehouse. A data map is a technique for establishing a match. And this technique identifies data, down, data shortfalls and recognizes data issues. Data maps can also alert managers to inconsistencies to help determine the cause and effects of enterprise-wide business decisions. Data-driven decision management is an approach to business governance that values decisions that can be backed up with verifiable data. The success of the data-driven approach is reliant upon the quality of data gathered and the effectiveness of its analysis and interpretation. The power of big data analytics. Big data is a collection of large complex data sets including structured and unstructured data, which cannot be analyzed using traditional databases, database methods and tools and includes the following four common characteristics. First characteristic, variety. Variety characteristic may mean different forms of structured and unstructured data. For example, data from spreadsheets and databases as well as from email, videos, photos, and PDFs, all of it which must be analyzed. The next characteristic is veracity. The uncertainty of data, including biases, noise, and abnormalities. Uncertainty or untrustworthiness of data. Data must be meaningful to the problem being analyzed and must keep data clean and implement processes to keep dirty data from accumulating in systems. The next characteristic is volume. Volume depicts the scale of data, includes enormous volumes of data generated daily, massive volume created by machines and networks, big data tools necessary to analyze zettabytes and brontobytes. Velocity is the next characteristic. Velocity looks at the analysis of streaming data as it travels around the internet. Analysis necessary of social media messages are spreading globally. It is important to know that big data includes both <coughs> structured and unstructured data. Unstructured data is far more difficult to store, analyze, and mine. Some examples of structured and unstructured data include, first of all, let's have a look at structured data. These are data coming from census, web log, finance or financial departments, click stream, point of sale, accounting. Unstructured data include satellite images, photographic data, video data, data from social media, text messages, and voicemail.
the power of big data analytics continued. The two primary computing models that have shaped the collection of big data include distributed computing, processes and manages algorithms across many machines in a computing environment. Virtualization, the creation of a virtual rather than actual version of computing resources, such as an operating system, a server, a storage device, or network resources. Big data depends on distributed computing environment and virtualization. The remainder of the lecture focuses on data mining, data analysis, and data visualization. First of all, let's have a look at data mining. Data mining is the process of analyzing data to extract information not offered by the raw data alone. The three elements of data mining include data, recovery, and deployment. Data is the foundation of data directed decision making. Discovery is a process of identifying new patterns, trends, and insights. Deployment is a process of implementing recovery discoveries to drive success. Data mining can begin at the summary information level and progress to increasing levels of detail or the reverse. Now, when we begin mining data from the summary information level is called as caused granularity. Spelling of course is C-O-A-R-S-E. Now, when we mine data and progress to increasing levels of detail is called drill down. And when we mine data backwards, that means from big uh, levels to much more smaller levels is called drill down. Steps in the data mining process model include, one, you have business understanding. From understanding and having knowledge about the business, then data is understood. After that data is prepared and it is modeled, and evaluated and deployed as you can see in the diagram. Data profiling is the process of collecting statistics and information about data in an existing source. Insights extracted from data profiling can determine how easy or difficult it will be to use existing data for other purposes along with providing metrics on data quality. Data replication is a process of sharing information to ensure consistency between multiple data sources. Data mining can determine relationships among such internal factors as price, product, positioning, or staff skill and external factors such as economic indicators, competition, and customer demographics. A recommendation engine is a data mining algorithm that summarizes a customer's purchases and actions on a website and then uses the data to recommend complementary products. Some common data mining techniques include classification. Classification basically assigns records to one of a predefined set of classes. Estimation determines values for an unknown continuous variable behavior or estimated future behavior. Affinity grouping determines which things will go together. And finally, clustering segments a heterogeneous population of records into a number of more homogeneous subgroups. Data mining modeling techniques for prediction. Data mining tools use a variety of techniques to find patterns and relationships in large volumes of information that predict be future behavior and guide decision making. Data mining uncovers patterns and trends such as building budgets and other financial information. Detecting fraud by identifying deceptive spending patterns 
finding the best customers who spend the most money, keeping customers from leaving or migrating into competitors, promoting and hiring employees to ensure success. Other examples include predicting customers that might leave for a competitor, predicting products that sell together, optimizing customer checkout lines to ensure customers do not have to wait. Prediction, it is a statement about what will happen or might happen in the future. For example, predicting future sales or employee turnover. Predicting model techniques include optimization model. An optimization model, it is a statistical process that finds the way to make a design system or decision as effective as possible. For example, finding the values of controllable variables that determine maximal productivity or minimal waste. Forecasting model. Time series information is time stand information collected at a particular frequency. Forecasts are predicted based on time series information, allowing users to manipulate the time series for forecasting activities. Example, web visits per hour, sales per month, customer service calls per day. Regression model. It is a statistical process for estimating the relationship among variables. Regression models include many techniques for modeling and analyzing several variables when the focus is on relationship between a dependent variable and one or more independent variables. Example, predicting the winners of marathon based on gender, height, weight, and hours of training. Data analysis. An information cube is a common term for representation of multi-dimensional information. Three cubes are presented in the slide. Users can slice and dice the cube to drill down into information. Cube A represents store information, product information, and promotional information. Cube B represents the slice of information displaying promotion for all products at all stores. Cube C represents a slice of information displaying promotion number three for product B at store two. In this way, users can slice and dice the cube to drill down into the information. Algorithms. Mathematical formulas placed in software that often perform an analysis on a data set. Algorithms can help uncover anomaly detection. It is a process of identifying rare or unexpected items or events in a data set that do not conform to other input items in the data set. Outliers, a data value that is numerically distant from most of the other points in a set of data. Analysis paralysis. User goes into an emotional state of overanalysis or overthinking a situation so that a decision or action is never taken, in effect, paralyzing the outcome. Advanced data analytics, fast data. It is the application of big data analysis to smaller data sets in near real or real time in order to solve a problem or create business value. Data scientists perform big data analytics using behavioral analysis. Behavioral analysis is using data about people's behavior to understand intent and predict future actions. Correlation analysis. It determines the statistical relationship between variables, often for the purpose of identifying predictive factors among the variables. Exploratory data analysis identifies patterns in data, including outliers, uncovering the underlying structure to understand relationships between the variables. Pattern recognition analysis. 
the classification or labeling of an identified pattern in the machine learning process. Social media analysis analyzes text flowing across the internet, including unstructured text from blogs and messages. Speech analysis, the process of analyzing recorded calls to gather information, brings structure to customer interactions and exposes information buried in customer contact center interactions with an enterprise. Speech analysis is heavily used in the customer service department to help improve processes by identifying angry customers and routing them to appropriate customer service representatives. Text analysis analyzes unstructured data to find trends and patterns in words and sentences. Web analysis analyzes unstructured data associated with websites to identify consumer behavior and website navigation. Data visualization. Data artists use infographics to display patterns, relationships, and trends in a visual format. Infographics present the results of data analysis. It displays the patterns, relationships, and trends in a graphical format. Infographics can present the result of large data analysis looking for patterns and relationships that monitor changes in variables over time. A data artist is a business analysis specialist who uses visual tools to help people understand complex data. Data visualization. Data visualization describes the technologies that allow users to see or visualize data to transform information into a business perspective. Data visualization tools move beyond Excel graphics and charts into sophisticated analysis techniques such as pie charts, controls, instruments, maps, time series graphs, and more. Business intelligence dashboards. It keeps track of corporate metrics such as critical success factors and key performance indicators and include advanced capabilities for, pardon me, include advanced capabilities such as interactive controls, allowing users to manipulate data for analysis. So this completes the lecture for lecture six, part two. Thank you for listening, everyone.